My name's CJ. Today we're going to analyze a letter written by a young woman about her parents' divorce as a result of her mother coming out as a lesbian. So, pretty tough letter and seemingly a private matter, but this has been posted online by the author, um, publicly available. And what we're going to do is we're going to analyze this sample and see what we see. A generally useful thing to first look at is the margins, right? How are they? So we look at these margins, right? How, uh, how are they spaced? Is she crowding the top? Is she crowding the bottom? We'll look at the, we'll get to the bottom in a bit. And we see they're pretty well spaced, right? There's not a lot of, um, it's not a lot of crowding on either side. You see my mother, you see that a little bit crowded, right? There's stuff coming in from the past here, and it's obviously related to her mother, and this is would almost be normal because the contents of this letter are talking about things that have happened in the past tense, things that have already happened, past perfect continuous, and then continuing into the present. So, right, so she's pulling it from the past here. You one thing that tempers a lot of this is right we do see bigger spacing over on the right side the future right where's the writing going so when we're seeing this uh, a lot of space here right a lot of space here a lot of space here um this that that can be some uncertainty right she doesn't quite know where it's going another thing to consider is this is written in full caps. So full caps is the most, think of each of these letters, right? Nothing stands out. Each letter is as high as another. It's like a, a wall of bricks, right? Each brick looks exactly the same. And so when someone writes in full caps with no delineation about, look, a first letter is just as big as every other letter, right? I right um that's just as big as that any other letter and so it's like a brick wall you're just looking at a brick wall you, you it's used as a defensive mechanism to, to hide uh our writing on an instinctive level right it all looks the same so you're just gonna read the words right you're gonna read that conscious thought i wrote this words is what we write is our conscious mind and how we write is her subconscious mind. So she is, I would assume this is an effect of having to, uh, or feeling obligated or wanting to publish this to the wider public. She's wanting to hide a little bit of it. So we see that with the full caps. And so that does discount um, a little bit of the spacing, right? Because it adds a little bit of uh, almost a conscious calculation to the writing. So when, and you'll see that with, look how level the writing is. It's very much a straight line. So where we're gonna look is delineations from that straight line. So divorced, right? See a bit of going downhill there. Dad is noticeably lower than the rest of the words here, right? Dad, that's lower. Um, so, a little bit of a low opinion of dad and I don't know you know why that is um, I need to see a sample written about you know her feelings about her dad or a story regarding her dad when she was a child part of this is you want to also look at what words were chosen right because our conscious mind we choose what words we write with it and so looking at what words we chose uh, just as important about how we wrote it. This young, beautiful chick, and she smokes a lot of weed, right? It's, this phrasing's a little weird, right? This, uh, it's almost a little uh, bit of a dehumanizing um, thing. This, this young, this, right? This thing, a bit of a objectification, I guess would be the best way to say that. Um, right, we notice a with her eyes, 
uh, her eyes are almost lowercase compared to the rest of these letters, right? Except for here, I exist, right? But look, look, right? Tiny eye right here, tiny eye, right? Look, the eye is smaller than the M here, right? And so what that shows is a person, this could be two things. This could be her consciously lowering herself or minimizing her, her ego because I is really important in English. Uh, I am uh, in the Bible. That's it's one of the most it's the most famous two words that exist in the English language, and it's used to describe ourselves. I is also the only one that's a single letter that really represents our entire ego, our entire subconscious. It re re represents us in totality. I, I. So when you see small eyes here. Right? This could be minimizing her own ego, her own sense of self, maybe because she feels a little obligated to sympathize with her mother. Where we see I was frustrated, right? I, right? That small I we were talking about. Capital F, frustrated. Really, really was feeling frustrated with, with mom, right? So when you have no capital letters we start looking at well, what is capitalized right what is capitalized frustrated right the F here is a little bit bigger so we're not going to place a ton of importance on it but it's elevated even further right to be from the baseline frustrated she is frustrated then the spacing here is a little odd why would there be a gap in the spacing, right? There's much more room to fit what she was saying here. So now that she's minimized herself and being frustrated, she has allowed herself to expand a little bit more with her eyes, right? Just a little bit more because she's now able to put herself back in, right? She's She's been penitent. She's disassociated herself with with the negative emotion and now she's allowing herself to come back into her her full ego into this statement right when she's minimized the frustration she's allowing herself to exist i exist and that's even lower than the rest right so subsuming herself into the greater reason uh, is because she didn't live her truth for 45 years, 46 years. So her mom's 46 years old. Forgetting kind of dates here, right? This happened a year ago, but so, right? She, her mom's 46. <clears throat> she didn't live her truth for 45 years. She wrote 46 because her mom's 46, but I'm assuming this happened a year ago. When you confuse time, um, especially when you when you initially make it the the present time, is this is still something that's being processed, right? This had to be corrected afterwards. To oh no, this happened in the past. That's where you get into that past perfect continuous, right? It's still going on. Uh, this person's still going through it. So when we're going into the end here, we're gonna see. Right, happy first pride, mama. I love you. I would infer, right, look at, we're gonna look at those steps down. And what the steps down, it's going downhill. Whenever you see this descent, this is, it's almost like an ellipses for emotion, right? So, I love you, dot, 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 dot. So it starts that we start out with mother here cool as mom and then mama is she's trying on different pants uh, or dresses whatever the case may be uh, shirts you're trying on different shirts and when you this is not quite sure how to address her not quite sure about the relationship how is it right we got we have mother we have mom, we have mama, 
right? And then we have this descending thing. I don't like to hazard guesses while doing this, but one thing I would hazard is that her mom is probably spending a lot less time with her. She's objectifying her mom's new partner, right? A lot of weed, right, is, oh, well, that's, she's smoking a lot of weed, right, on its own line, right? She could have fit an A there. That's separate. And, you know, she started smoking weed. She's smoking a lot of weed. Right? So it, it's kind of this, this highlighting. Um, right? Followed by the subsuming of, the, of herself and the further subsuming of herself. Right? When she starts to get critical and she's not even letting herself finish um, the point here. She's not letting it end on a critical note. And you can also see things unsaid. There is stuff unsaid here, right? In a, in a pretty clear way. There's no period. There's a lot of other stuff in terms of negative emotion that she wants to say right here. But she's skipping to kind of a forced realization that lets her expand herself, right? That lets her recover her ego in a way she feels is appropriate. I don't know if that's in a personal level or a wider societal level, but that's what we see for that. Truth starts to have a backward slant here, right? right it's kind of digging into the past. Maybe what else is what else is the truth, right? Where so was this all a lie? Is there is there was the love I felt a lie? That's kind of the vibe I'm getting from this. So we're looking at L here. Um, we're not seeing, I'm not seeing a lot of uniqueness, a lot of personality, not a lot of herself written in there. What we also do see is two pretty distinct hooks. And if I circle them, I'm gonna cover them. So you're just gonna have to, uh, look at the bottom of the letters right here right we see two hooks he's kind of this kind of attached to the past so we have boom and I'm doing this poorly but hook right there's that hook right there on the letter and then with the L right there's that extra hook right there which you can see I'm pretty bad at using a trackpad but you would hope to see, uh, what you want to see is something like that, L. If your name's L, something like that, right? A little bit of combination of cursive, or if you're just doing printing, right? So you have that strong E, no hooks, none of this, none of this hook stuff, but then L, and a little smaller than L. Maybe a little bit more balanced too, but we'll do what we can. Yeah, like that. You'd want to see something like that. Something where their personality is strong in their signature. I, I don't know if L's a pet name. Uh, it could be that. But if she didn't write her full name, and it's not a pet name, L. Generally, if you're writing something really heartfelt, uh, you write your full name. That's what I generally find. So the fact that we're only seeing a partial name written here is feels a little incomplete, a little kind of subsuming themselves. The positive things I like. I like the formation of these hearts. I think that's a nice touch. I think that shows uh, warmth and trying to uh, reach out. Even though this person might be struggling with um, the change in their life you can tell that right we have a little gap here a little gap here and then third times the charm right they connect it they connect um, that love right here right so they're gonna keep trying until they get to where they want to be which I really do like 
I think it would be healthy. Uh, I talked about this before, but this gap, it is okay to not feel totally comfortable with massive life changes, especially with your parents. We kind of always think they're going to be the same. It's okay to feel, uh, you know, harsh emotions. And I think subconsciously there was an acknowledgement that there does need to be something right here, right? There does need to be something said there. There does need to be something expressed. You have emotions and you should be able to express those. And you should. You really should. It's, uh, I think it would be very healthy uh, for you connecting with your mother in her new way. I think something that would also help is connecting with your dad. Seeing how your dad's doing. You know, this if it was a shock for you, uh, it must have been a shock for him as well. So I would recommend that, is that it's important not to leave your dad out, right? Because what we see here is divorced my dad, right? He's only connected to anything. It's you were frustrated, right? Um, you're not expressing it. And your dad was left behind in the divorce here. Right? We can see the dad is left behind. So we wanna, you want to bring dad with you on this journey of coming to terms with it. Right? Because it's, you know, okay, you're, you're happy that your mom is or you're saying that you're trying to be. But uh, I think part of that is if we only express the positive, right, of a, a a big change or we're like oh it's a great thing and I'm happy for him blah blah but you don't acknowledge any of maybe a negative aspect or a difficult aspect for yourself how can that how can you move forward right those those feelings we just bought it you just put a band-aid on it the wounds gonna get infected you gotta you gotta peel off the band-aid and you gotta clean it out so what we see here is I like the numbers. You can see that was on the bottom. I think they're written well. Uh, there's good formation, right? Which is good, which is good. That could speak to using a lot of um, kind of the logic side of your brain, like reasoning this out. But I do see an emotional gap here on this hot dog I've drawn, apparently. Um, they're, without expressing the negative aspect or the difficult aspect, this, the author's not going to be able to come to terms with this, I'm trying to think their way into it, right? We, it's very difficult for us to think our way into being emotionally comfortable with something. And that's what I get a lot of, and with the printing, right? So they will keep trying to get there, but you're not going to get there, just a hint, if you don't fill in the hot dog here. Right? If you don't express difficult as well. If anyone else notices that you're writing in full caps, uh, try adding a little bit of cursive where you can. Try doing normal printing, right? So try bringing back capital letters um, if you're doing that, right? Make sure that the beginning of your sentences are that letter is a little bigger, right, than the rest. That's where I would start. And something, if you want to, is one of my favorites is on the, and I will cover what that letter and what that formation actually helps you do later on. First thing, if you're writing in all caps, I understand you have to do it for work, but when you write in your own free time, you don't always have to. So, we're writing the, right? Instead of doing all caps, what let's try to do is try out the lowercase letters, right? Let's just try out some lowercase letters and then see how the rest goes. Okay, so I think that is everything. Uh, most everything, there's a few other things, but nothing significant enough or that I have a, low enough margin of error about to go into. 
So I hope you enjoyed this and please tune in for the next one. Opening up your writing, if anyone else noticed, noticed if anyone else notices, notices, geez, I can, I can do writing all right, speaking's the problem.